Welcome to Hindsight. I'm Corey Carter. And I'm Ron Poole. And I'm- Let's get it started. On this podcast, we've hacked hundreds of entrepreneurs' hindsight to help you, the listener, with better foresight. Now, guys, if you want to know all about what we can do to help you focus on being you, head over to GetHHM.com. Keep pushing through those ups and downs that we all will have. We're still going to have amazing conversations with amazing people. Hindsight hacking boils down to amazing conversations with some amazing people. everybody welcome back to another episode of hindsight hacking and today ron we have another first we have our very first zen monk or past zen monk uh, how to bring <laughs> former that zen monk former zen monk uh but mr alan knight has been an inner fitness i love that inner fitness and communication coach for over 25 years as a former zen monk he's created a unique training formula to help us effectively navigate our lives within this chaotic world. Alan is the creator of Zen Zone Mindset Training, and I am super stoked to get into all this, uh, as well as he's he's got a book or two that uh, that we get to talk about. So, Alan, thank you so much for joining the show, and uh, thank you for coming here today. Well, it's my pleasure. Look forward to chatting to both of you cool guys, Cool and Carter. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We've never had a monk, so that's going to be exciting to learn. Oh, that sounds really exciting. If you if you're excited about talking to a former Zen monk, you've got a real problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're all about first, though, Alan. Yeah, we love it, the it's, it's always about the first. So as long as there's a first, we're excited. Okay, about. we're going to start this way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, before we get too far into it. Why don't you kind of catch us up, give us your backstory a little bit to what got you to be a former monk to now? Very quickly, when I was 13 years old, my mother was diagnosed with cancer, told she had six months to live. She lived for almost 20 years. And so my mother was my first role model of the power of the human spirit. When I was 19, my father died. And then I was in the middle of taking a Bachelor of Psychology and I kind of knew that I wanted to train, teach, but I didn't know what. I was kind of lost. Took a year off, traveled the world, went to city to city, country to country. Is that, is that, all, is that all there is? It was kind of cool, cool, Ron, cool. But uh, there was something missing. And then I had my first life-changing experience where uh, I came that close to dying on a desert from a heat stroke. And I was so freaked out about that, that when I got home to Montreal, where I currently live, I kind of felt like I was open up to that. I was pretty atheistic, but I started to explore my spiritual back, or my spirituality, my personal development. Met these two people that were living at what was called the Zen Meditation Center at the time, and their eyes were calm, centered, clear. They they invited me there. There were about thirty of them, all with these clear, calm eyes. I said, I want more of that. I moved in, lived like a monk for nine years until I missed women too much. And then I left living at the monastery. Yeah, definitely. uh, uh, (laughs) You have to give up a lot, but you gain a lot. And uh, and, and the experience in the desert, and and really, I want to just bring that up a little bit, because so many people have a life changing experience and and they do, you know, one of two things, right? Like they usually they, uh, you know, can go and make their life better from it. Sometimes they do the latter and things get spin out of control. But uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Like you, you, you had the life changes experience, you explored the spirituality and then nine years, like that's a big chunk of your life, nine years to, to go and, 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 and live in that, in that way. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I learned at the end of the nine years when I left is I quickly realized that I had learned a lot about how to center the mind, how to get into a deep st- a state of calmness, etc. But when I went back into society, I realized I was a bit of a basket case when it came to all the other aspects of life that I I needed to integrate all those aspects, which actually led me to creating the Zen Zone Mindset Training, because it's all about the whole person. But when you got the Zen part, when you learn to get into, tap into that, I call it that Zen Zone, and let that guide the rest, 
and you take care of your physical fitness and you take care of your emotionality and you take care of attracting quality relationships, be it personal or professional, and you follow the career of your dreams or whatever it be, when you live holistically that way, uh, life becomes effortless and just full of joy and happiness. No matter how much money you're making or not mon making, you're living your dream. And if you get off track, it's the sixth step of my nine steps, you learn how to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and get back in the Zen zone. So you live more and more with that joy, with that confidence and with that success. I love pretty much everything you just said. I'm pretty excited about it. So, so let's, let's, I'm going to kind of dig in a little bit here. So pick yourself back up. That could be if somebody's battling a hard time or depression on something, or they're just battling through. Is that what you mean by that? To help them get through that with your, with your nine steps? It could be good question, but it could be anything. The, I, the number six step, which I call busting through the barriers, we all, no matter how wonderful our lives might be, I believe that all of us are tested sometimes in a small way. Like you, you might go out and it's, you think it's a nice day and it's raining. That's what I call a small scud missile. Somebody steals two, three, four, five thousand dollars. It's a medium scud missile. But if you have a loved one have four stage cancer, that's a major scud missile. So one of the things that I teach people in number six is how to feel it, feel the pain, whatever it is, but then quite quickly pick yourself up by the bootstraps and get back in the zone. Now that's, that's true self mastery, but that can only happen if you start really working on your emotional psychological stuff. If you have a lot of insecurity, if you have a lot of fear, if you have a lot of lack of belief in yourself, then the scud missiles are likely to overwhelm you and you become the victim of them. So whether it's, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's over 10 years ago. That was one of the biggest scud missiles in my life. But what I did quite quickly, I now look back and say, you know what, I'm navigating it pretty well. When someone's with me, they hardly notice I have it. But it's been a great teacher because it pushed me or I allowed it to push me and say, I'm going to go to a deeper level of inner freedom and focus and soul and all this rest. And I've never been happier. I've never been more effective in my relationships, partly because of how I dealt with those scud missiles. Like you, like you just said, uh, Ron, everybody's different. You either become a victim of them and a victim of them and suffer, or you use them as as a as a lemon lemon becomes lemonade, and you learn how to transform yourself into a whole new level of freedom and happiness. Yeah. So, from you know, obviously, anybody that's going to uh, go through any program. Uh, albeit uh, coaching to be better with finances, coaching to, uh, you know, do some kind of training to launch a podcast that we teach or in your, in your uh, nine step process of the Zen becoming within the Zen zone mindset is, is it typically take, uh, you know, 30 days to get to step three? Is it typically a year to get to step nine? Is it like, you know, it obviously again with everybody, what they put into it is what they'll get out of it. But uh um, you know, what's kind of been the, the experience on, on how you can get somebody to, to be able to get more joy and more confidence and all that. You, you guys ask great questions. First of all, uh, there's no program in the world, no matter how great the program is, even Alan Knight's program, whatever I do, is going to get people to, to achieve the highest level of nirvana and perfection in 30 days. And I don't claim that at all. However, what I do claim is that when I embarked becoming a personal development teacher of sorts, I began to see that as people came through my office and I asked them, how much work have you done on your own personal development? Many of them would say, oh, I've read every book. I've spent five, 10, $25,000 on this and this and this. And then I would do my evaluation and assessment, which is step number one, by the way. And many of them still procrastinated, still had a hyperactive mind, still lack sufficient confidence, still were not bold and assertive enough, were too hard on themselves and the list goes on. And I thought there's something wrong here. So then I looked at the whole training industry and the self-development industry and I realized most people when they talk about it are talking about becoming more aware. Mindset is important, the law of attraction, all these words and buzzwords are great, but they're just words and they help a lot of people become more aware. What I wanted to do 
is if you were a physical fitness trainer, you don't get me into reading books or into a rah rah seminar. You get me in the gymnasium and I work out four or five times a week. So that's why the nine step formula that I developed is a practical transformational system. You just navigates you through these areas of your mind, emotion, confidence, communication, mastery. It speeds up relative inner freedom and happiness and contentment and confidence. But of course, that's going to go on forever. But within 90 days, if you practice the things that I teach, you're going to come to a very, very high level of inner freedom and self-confidence and communication effectiveness. No, I, I, I love that. And I love the whole mindset piece that you're talking. And, you know, I, I know we could probably do a whole show on that. What, what if, so I, God, I have two questions. One, and you can pick which one you want to want to answer. But one, where do you see in your process where people would struggle the most that you have to kind of dig in more with them? Or is it all individual? Or is there a place that you know, hey, this is going to be hard for this person? And so you're you're setting them up or they they trip. Again, you got by, by the way, I got to acknowledge you guys for your brilliant questions. It says a lot about you. Thanks. Um, it depends on the person. Some people have trouble in step number two, which I talk about connecting with the past. A lot of people, especially men, a bit more than women, not all men, not all, not all women, of course. But a lot of men will say to me, Alan, I don't care about the past is the past. I just want to get on with the present and the future. Great. I agree with you. However, I'm not interested in the past, but what I am interested in, what in the past is living in you now like an infection and parasite? So in step number two, we have a letting go exercises that I teach people that help to release some of the negativity, some of the anger, some of the resentment, some of the grudges that we might continue to hold. We got to let that go, release it, experience it, channel it and release it. And then we're more open to step number three, which is vision muscles and four is inner fitness muscles and five is action and accountability, building your lifestyle muscles. So for some people, number two is a bit of a resistance. Other people embrace that very nicely. A lot of women especially do because they, they, they're used to doing that kind of thing. But where the real, real growth happens is step number four and six. Four is the inner fitness muscle building exercises. That's where people, it's powerful and simple, but it requires some commitment and discipline to do it every day. And number six is the real, my most favorite one, which is busting through the barriers because self mastery and true inner freedom will only come not by having a temporary high, but when you go through the challenge and pick yourself up quicker and quicker and quicker and get in the Zen zone, that's enlightenment. That's what I was seeking when I became a monk. And that's why I guess I'm a late bloomer. And, you know, people ask me, how come you're not at the Tony Robbins level? I said, well, I wanted to walk to talk. I didn't want to just be a teacher. I wanted to be a master. Right, right. And that's why I set up a certification program to teach as many people. My, that's my goal now to teach as many people to teach this. So when something happens to me, the program still goes on way beyond me. Nice. Ah, that's leaving a legacy on that. Um, but so let, let's talk a little bit more, if you wouldn't mind, on inner fitness. Again, I mentioned that as I did the introduction, like for whatever reason that it, being a, an athlete and, and playing sports, I see, I know you played some baseball back in the day. Like I love baseball. I've been coaching my son's baseball team now um, for the last like eight years. And, and so, you know, anything sports related and you said inner fitness, like it makes me think of, uh, oh, this is something that if I do the work, then I can achieve the result. And so can you give us an example of, of what, wow. what someone would do within that? It's just amazing. You're talking, you're talking to an ex jock here. I've been preoccupied with sports all my life. As a matter of fact, I got to, into, went into a deep state of depression last night when the Jays lost to the Yankees. I <laughs> couldn't believe we were so close and now we're done. Oh. But anyway, uh, I, I'm a jock from way back. Baseball was my favorite. I was a fastball pitcher. Um, I, I learned something when I pitched baseball. I was playing for a team and I noticed that one season we had a better team than the other team that we got in the playoffs. They had come fourth, we became first and we lost. And I watched the people who were playing for the other team and they were arrogant, bold, aggressive and our guys were intimidated by them. The next year we came sixth and got into the playoffs 
and I decided to take the bull by the horns and I took everybody to, by the side and I said, okay, now we're going to get into this. We're going to get our emotions in here. We're not going to get intimidated by anyone. And I went on a rampage like that. We won the whole thing. And it planted a seed in my mind that a lot of, and I'm sure you being an, uh, uh, an athlete, uh, athlete Corey, you can relate to this, that there's some athletes that come, whether basketball, football, hockey, whatever it be, they come with all this adulation and they never achieve their full potential. And I, I, I've met uh, professionals like that and I've sh shake their hand and they shake their hand and it's kind of wimpy, shake. They don't have that inner fortitude, that consistent belief in themselves. And so one of the things I want to do with the first seven steps, which is inner fitness, is eventually teach athletes or former athletes how to become a coach and have many, many people teach that side of it. This program is geared to mental fitness, but it's not just like sports psychology, the odd visualization. It goes much more deep and practical than that. And when you come out of that, you're so strong and mentally tough. You could take a picture and that picture will start throwing more consistently and get in the zone, get in the zone and not start to get in their head and wonder and have self doubts and pick themselves apart and then it screws up their productivity. So the inner fitness is powerful because in step number four, I deal with the emotions, the mind and the Zen zone. So I have a whole range of exercises that builds those muscles. So your mind, you're, you're in the zone, your emotions are feeling great about who you are and you've channeled any negativity into enthusiasm and passion and you reprogram any negative belief you have about yourself. So when you're at that level of inner fitness, the actions of number five and the communication of number eight just have like a ripple effect on all of them. And that's why it catapults you into living a much more extraordinary life. I love that. I love that. This is like perfect timing for me. So I'm loving all of these. I've got a bunch of notes here. All right. So we got to do a podcast together, guys. Yeah, that's right. That's let's right. Do it. Yeah. It's, it's all things podcasting. Let's go. Like Ron let's and I. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, all right. So people go through your program. They, they get to this Zen state. Is that something they practice daily, weekly, monthly? Or is it like just as you go through the day, if you notice, hey, I'm slipping? It, you have a trigger to get into this this state again? I, I never tell people what to do. I just recommend what works. And what has worked for me for 35, 40 years is I do my inner hour, a power hour. It doesn't have to be 60 minutes, but I call it my power hour. So it's Corey power hour, uh, Ron's power hour, power, uh, power hour. And it's flexible according to who you are. It's not so rigid. It's what works for you. So in my power hour every day, when I get up, the cobwebs are there. I make sure that quite quickly in the day, I'm going to take myself, get in the car or get in a quiet room, and I'm going to do a series of exercises that's going to include getting in the zone. It could be chanting that I do because I love chanting. I relate to it. Some people don't. Uh, it includes prayer. It includes affirmations. It includes whatever it takes. Sometimes release emotion just to get the, the emotion out. And when you do that, you get in the zone, you feel it almost immediate impact and it takes you through the rest of the day. That's why when people say, Alan, do you recommend doing it in the morning or evening? Hey, best do both. But if I was to choose one, I'd say the morning because then you attack your day from your highest self. But I highly recommend to all my clients do them every day. It's the easiest thing to let go because when you start feeling good in your life, it's so easy to say, I got it, I'm there. And you put that aside. But I highly recommend that people get on a habit of doing it every day, at least once a day. Now with some of my beginners that come on board, I recommend that they do some of this on their, what their during the day, whether they're out taking a walk, going shopping, they can do some of these inner fitness exercises while they do it. But once you get so good at it, you, you're just starting to live it. You don't have to do them as often as you, as you did at the beginning. Yeah, definitely. It It's it's so funny. I, I mean, Ron and I, have ha we've had a couple conversations about this in the past about just, you know, again, not to necessarily push the rigidity of it, but to have some kind of morning routine, right? Like if you can wake up and do things as little as like drink a full glass of water uh, to, you know, any kind of workout, to meditation or whatever it might be. Um, I, you know, personally, like if I start my day 
with something like that, I feel, you know, a thousand times better than if I, if I don't. And, uh, and, and so I just, I love that, uh, you know, attack your day from your high, with your highest self. Like, I'd love that comment there. Can I, can I just say one last thing that I forgot to mention, which is yeah. very yeah. important. People often ask me, they say, Alan, do you teach people meditation? And one of the things that I've learned and why I created the nine steps, not the one step, because if it was the one step, I would just teach meditation and that would be it. But I learned a long time ago when I first got into coaching, I tried to teach people meditation. It's the last thing they needed. It was wrong for me to teach them that. One woman friend who I was so hoping would grow, the more she meditated, the more she was angry because the more she looked in what was in her mind. That is why I realized that unless you connect meditation with some of the fundamentals to prepare you for meditation, you shouldn't meditate. You shouldn't focus on it. You could still meditate, but it's not going to be your main focus. That's why I deal with inner fitness on step four, not step one. So that's why I just wanted to say that, that the holistic approach is the key, because I don't want to lead your audience astray by saying, geez, if you do some inner fitness, hour power exercises, that's going to be it. it it's great, but it comes as part of the context is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, I love that too. And and even yesterday, Ron and I had this conversation about how, like I, I went for a long kick in my morning routine of I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes, right? But it was more of just me checking off a box versus me making progress with my life, right? Versus me making progress with my mind. Because I didn't do the the calisthenics, so to speak, for all the steps that you're talking about, right? Like I didn't do the work that was needed prior to make it actually work w- worthwhile versus me just checking off a box and making it happen. So uh, well, you, you bring up another really good point that happened in the conversation I had with a woman yesterday. I said, Alan, is your program too male oriented? Is it too regimented? It's numbers and graphs. And I said, I'm the least numbers guy in the world. The reason I put the system together was that the system is just a skeleton to guide you but it's not limited. It's not like a regimented that you do this and you do this and you do this. As a matter of fact, you might set a goal to do your hour power hour at eight o'clock in the morning. And then all of a sudden, because of your self mastery, remember your intuition kicks in and your intuition supersedes, supersedes everything because it's almost it's a spiritual thing. So your intuition say, you know what? Today, not doing it at eight o'clock. I am now on a roll with my brainstorming for my business. I'm going to take myself into my office and I'm going to brainstorm until I'm tired of that and I'll do my inner fitness later. It's about freedom, not being imprisoned to the system. Very important point. Yeah, I like that. So you have you have a framework. Here's the things you kind of have to do, but you don't you're not like bricklaying and it always has to be perfect. So exactly, I mean, sir. Exactly. Uh, do, do you notice people respond to that better? Like, I think that fits like my personality, but I do, I am a planner, but I also like to get things done my own way. So I think, do you think people respond to that better in your program and have more success because of how you set that up? The whole reason, great question again, the whole reason I set up the nine step formula is to be able to fit whoever you are inside it. Uh, it's a duplicatable system that has flexibility and fluidity. When it comes to inner fitness, what I tell my clients, hey, don't do what I do, do what works for you. If getting in the zone includes hot yoga, do that. If it, if it includes taking a scuba dive, do that. Do whatever it takes to get clear mentally, emotionally and whatever, but it leaves a lot of flexibility so, so for the people that are uh, that are perfectionists and are planners like you, Ron, you can use it as you use it. If someone else is a little bit more spontaneous like me, I'll use it as I use. I don't use some of those manuals that I are part of the manuals that I send out to people. I don't even use them sometimes because now I'm at the state of my life where I kind of know what I, I'm doing every day. And then I follow my intuition when I need to get off track. So I'm free because the whole point is to become free not to be imprisoned by the system itself. Right, right, right. To love it. Love yeah, it. that's so funny. And and I'm, I'm, the systems is usually what drives me and I get, you know, married to those systems and lose that freedom. And so uh, it's so, such a good point. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to shift gears on us a little bit. And, and I want to, you know, hindsight hacking, we're all about 
uh, making sure that our audience gets better foresight because of your hindsight, Alan. And so my question today is, is all about, you created the nine steps for the Zen Zone Mindset program, uh, but, but now you made a comment about how your goal is to teach people to become coaches that they can teach this to basically leave uh, even, you know, if something happens to you at some point, which it happens to all of us at some point, uh, your message and the, uh, the growth that has happening with your coaches to their students can continue on. At what point did you realize that you, you were ready to make that impact for uh, more of a legacy versus just impacting the person right in front of you? I remember it as clear as yesterday. I was invited to uh, a conference in LA about 10 years ago. T some of the top motivators, there were 200 people there. And I couldn't help but see p speaker after speaker after speaker get up, a lot of rah-rah stuff. I'm sure they're all wonderful people and I'm not in any way trying to criticize them. But it almost came across that they were more interested in making money than helping people, even though they said they wanted to help people. It bothered me. The other thing that bothered me is a lot of coaches and especially motivators will sell you on a program and then upsell you and upsell you and use NLP techniques. And I hate that. I just hate that. And I said, I don't want to do that. I want to help people, even if I come up with one training program, if it's going to have major impact, then take the training and never come back to Alan Knight. I'm, I'm happy with that. So what happened also is I realized one of the guys that gave a talk at that session owned a company called Action Coach International. And he said, if you want to be a coach, you could, you could do that. But if you want to make a coach and reach a lot of people, create a duplicatable system. And I knew that I was on track. So I decided about a year ago, better late than never, that I want to leave a legacy. I want to, uh, my goal, uh, my webs, my new website just went up yesterday. It's a good timing here, alanknight.com. And I'm 90% of my focus is going to be to train people that either want to be trainers or, ha or are coaches, but they don't have a system like mine train as many people in as many languages and as many target audience. For some, it'll be sports. For some, it'll be dating. For some, it'll be soulmates. For some, it'll be entrepreneurial. Doesn't matter. They can use the nine steps using their personality. If I can create hundreds, if not thousands of people around the world teaching and some will become te train the trainers and a few will become part of my company. And if something happens to me, <laughs> they, could, they could take the, hey, maybe the two of you. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, that's my goal. I just want to reach as many people so that when I pass away in this life, I'll have peace of mind saying, you know what? I did my best. I passed it on. The baton is there and I feel good. No, I, I love that. And that's the same philosophy Corey and I have. We, we hate when you buy into a program and like day two, they're pitching you into a huge, you know, neck sell, upsell. Like we we're the same way. Here's, here's everything. You get everything included. It's one price. There's no upsell move on, we'll teach you how to do it. So you can use us or not use us, but you actually get something for what you're paying for. And that's what we wanted to provide people so they can have an impact. And I know people listening are like, where can we connect with you and kind of what you're working on? What's the best place to kind of get involved in your world to get involved with your systems? Well, it's, it might, the best thing you could do right now for the short term is go to alanknight.com, which is my new site, A-L-L-A-N-K-N-I-G-H-T. You can go to facebook.com and add me there. I have a private, uh, I, I'll invite you guys into a private uh, uh, group, Zen Zone Mindset Group. Uh, I do have some social media people that are going to, within the next two, three weeks, we're going to launch some simple programs. What Some will be free that they can take and will help people how to market themselves and increase their their uh, their productivity using audio messaging on on uh, Facebook, how to run a meetup group so that you can earn three, four thousand dollars a month on running meetup groups, which I have thousands of members in my one back in Vancouver. Uh, I'll be teaching some smaller things, but some people will want to become certified coaches. But the best thing is going to alanite.com. It'll give you some overview of the Be A Coach program about the Zen Zone. You can connect with me. You could email me. You could book a complimentary consultation. I'm happy to do a complimentary assessment, even if you never take anything with me. Um, that's where to go at this point, alanknight.com. Oh, Alan, good stuff, good stuff. But I have one, one more very, very important question. 
And, and the reason, it, it, like, basically, this, this is the question that came to my mind the moment we met on Facebook um, and the moment we traded conversations is as an entrepreneur or a CEO or a manager of people or anybody like the, I believe, I believe that you should be growing. If you're not growing, you're dying, right? Like I believe you should be doing some kind of training, some kind of learning, whether it's a book, whether it's have a coach, whether it's something. Uh, but oftentimes, and I'm guilty of this, oftentimes, you know, the training I do is a tactic and less on, um, on, on the mindset, right? Less on the inner fitness. It's more of a, a skill to learn like, oh, I'm going to go learn how to create websites better. Or I'm going to learn how to edit a podcast better or whatever I'm doing, right? And uh, But it's so important, I think, in the entrepreneurial space that we check our minds, that we uh, continue to grow that uh, and, and get better and do the inner fitness. And so what's your belief on that for any of those entrepreneurs or thing that you can share with them on that? This takes me back over 30 years ago when I first made a decision to create a program is that I started off as a sales trainer. I've done a lot of sales in my life. And when I was doing sales training, I did it the old style. I'll teach you this technique. Here's a closing technique. Here's a communication technique. And then I realized 90% of the time it helped, but not very much. And as I explored each person that I was coaching, I realized that 80% oozed out from the inside. When I became a coach, I, wanted, I insisted to myself that I don't wanna just create a personal development program. I don't want to just become another life coach. There's nothing wrong with them. But I wanted to connect inner fitness with communication because often that's left out in the personal development world. And so every company I've gone to, when I looked at the problems that they were experiencing, 90% of them were communication, leadership and communication, interpersonal stuff. And it all comes back to the self. So if I'm a CEO of a company and I want to be the best leader I could be, let me lead me first. Let me learn how to accept, adore, respect, and love myself unconditionally. And I walk around with freedom and unconditional love. And then I'm going to be better with all the employees because I'm not going to lord it over them. I'm not going to be stepped on by them. I'm going to be a great leader. And then if I help them to become great leaders, then I've got a holistic, heart-centered culture. That's one of my goals in the corporate world. And I'm collaborating now with some people that want to do some collaboration. So I teach the inner fitness and they teach more of the business side of things. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, so good. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. Can I get one last thing in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, not allowed. <laughs> I, I, I left out one of the most important pieces because my biggest passion when I was 19 years old was I was always attracted to the concept of soulmates. I was going to ask wanted, about your soulmate revolution books. So right. right and I wanted it. to launch the nightclub, K-N-I-G-H-T, and help bring chivalry back, which maybe I used to will. I call it the soulmate revolution. So although I'm talking to you about the Zen zone of communication, behind the scenes, the soulmate revolution is, it's basically similar to the nine steps of the other one. The first seven are the same because it's self-mastery, but the communication part is... But I've always wanted to help contribute, help people bring soulmates into their life. And some people say, Alan, do we have one soulmate? I said, of course, we have many soulmates, friends, soulmates, business soulmates, family soulmates, but and, and twin souls and romantic soulmates. But most people are not kept up at night saying, I can't wait to meet my business soulmate. <laughs> most people, that's why I called my my book Soulmate Revolution, attracting all, all uh, attract all your soul soulmates, including the one. So we have many soulmates, but it starts with the inner soulmate, and that's the focus. So it will be a course that I start bringing out in the near future. Love it, love it. So is that is that a book that people can go find somewhere, or the book on? If you go to my website, on the, you're going to see the Zen Zone Mindset Gone Mind Gone Wild, the Soulmate Revolution. But I got to warn you, I got to be honest with you, the Soulmate Revolution over the next few three four months is going to be totally transformed because. It has a lot of similar elements to the first book, and I want to pack it with a lot more relationship stuff. So I recommend, you could buy it if you want, but I recommend if you're going to buy the book, buy Mind Gone, Gone Wild, uh, The Zen Zone Mindset, and you can get it on my website through Amazon. Perfect. All right, Alan, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you here, and uh, can't wait to can't wait to actually get this out to everybody because I know they're going to love it. They're going to be able to watch it on, on YouTube at some point. They'll be able to see it in the Facebook world. They'll be able to see it or hear it in the uh, podcast 
platforms, wherever they want to listen, iHeartRadio, Google, uh, Spotify, and iTunes, of course. And, uh, you know, and then there's going to be some clips that I know people are going to want because I know you just gave a little bit of gold for, uh, for everybody. So uh, I can't wait to get it all out. But again, Alan, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll tell you, you're not just nice guys. You asked some of the best questions I've ever had in an interview. So I just want to acknowledge you for that. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. All right, Ron. How was it having your very first monk or former monk, but monk the same? Um, <laughs> I'm feeling good. Like I, I enjoyed, like I wasn't done talking with him. I wanted to keep digging in. Like that was a really good conversation. Um, I have so, so many, so many. Um, I'm going to go through a, a couple. One is bust through the barriers. Right. And I think you have to, in order to move forward, you have to bust through it. Right. And I think sometimes depending on what it is, it takes longer to bust through than others, but you still have to bust through it or you can never move forward. Right. right. So I think that that's number one. Number two, I, I loved don't stop, make it a habit. Don't stop, make it a habit. So I'm, I'm going to share something I've yet to share ever. <laughs> on this show and you don't even know i'm doing it so right. um for for church you know we we just got in this new building it was a, it was a blessing and it was a, it was seriously a miracle building and you and i have talked about this off air however um we did a fasting and and program and prayed and did a bible study instead of like eating lunch right so we gave up lunch spent time in the bible and i was talking to rachel because it just ended and i was like gosh like I've really enjoyed that time, not only spending it in the Bible, but actually spending it with her and then connecting on what each of us are learning differently. It's like a great way to communicate, especially if you're at home with your spouse all the time, finding stuff that your spouse doesn't know you're doing to talk about is hard because they're with you all the time right? It's not super exciting. So this was just a way to do it. And so now it's, it, we're going to keep this on and now we're creating this habit that helps us mentally get better, helps us become a better person and helps us connect in a deeper way. So good. So good. Um, yeah. Like, like the connection piece, the communication piece. And you're right. As, as you work side by side with somebody all the time, sometimes you lose things to talk about. So uh, finding good habits of to add things to talk about. But my favorite thing from from Alan today uh, was that the comment he made about attack your day from your highest self, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, you know, however you can do that. It, and, and even Tony Robbins, it's all about the state you're in, like, you, you have the power to change that, right? Like, there's so many different things. But if you have the mindset, that I want to be, you know, my highest self to start the day, to, to move forward. Like how different can one show up for your kids, for your spouse, for your friends, for your family, for your business. And uh, you know, how much better of a day would one have if that's the mindset when you wake up, you attack the day from your highest self. And so I love that great conversation, probably more to come from Mr. Alan Knight in our future. So uh, a lot of fun, and uh, I can't wait to, can't wait to, to learn more about them. Perfect. Can't wait. Did you know that Hindsight Hacking Media Agency, we do all things podcasts from launch. If you're already doing 10,000 downloads in a week, we handle everything. All you have to do, record it and forget it. Guys, if you're launching a podcast, get with these guys. I could not honestly hit the charts without them. I'm not getting paid for this, but working with both of you, the professionalism and the system that you guys had to launch the podcast, you guys killed it. We want to help the impactors create an impact by just letting you be you and not worry about all this other crazy stuff. Connect with us. All the links will be in the show notes. See you next time. Go create an impact.